you know, and um, so she tried to look for a place where, where they would understand her, her son at the time, you know, where she could be educated, and you know, but it wasn't, it wasn't a, she, it was difficult for her to find, because she would go somewhere and there would be one speech person here. And, and because children with special needs have a lot of challenges, so it's not just, oh, okay, my child can't talk, oh, I need a speech therapist and everything will be okay. You know, there's a whole lot more to put, put together before the child begins to, to function or begins to have some, some um, gains and all of that. So anyway, she started out doing this on a Saturday. You know, so she started out, wanted to take care of her own children. So people heard, I'm like, okay, what are you doing? What are you doing differently? I'm like, okay, well, I do this in my house, you know, and then one person will come and then other people heard. So it was like a, it was a Saturday club functioning from her home. And, and it became a school. And then after now, five tell years, me, why, why, why is this now? You have a school. Yes. You have a relationship with Brookhouse, which is what is interesting to me. Yes, it is. We had to find her more like God. <laughs> God ordered us our steps to her because then we, after we worked with our children for a while, and we found out that okay, this children can learn. Okay, because now we're a school, and then for them to also go to the neurotypical school where Brook House is, is we can we also needed them to to begin to have social gains. Okay, so it's, it wasn't just about academics because yes, we were doing the academics as a school, but then they needed to go out there to see how you wanted to, you wanted to put them in regular schools. Yes, so they needed to learn how neuro, other children. So I'm a five year old. How would a five year old function? So yes, let them go run around. Weren't you scared? Mm -hmm. No, we weren't. We weren't. The, the parents were. They were a bit hesitant to say, are you sure? Because like telling people that, you know, people yes. like to hide these things. True. Parents hide their children. And that's why we're telling them that you don't need to hide them. We need to bring them out. They need to know what it is like in the, you know, on the outside. Which, which brings Mrs. Thomas in? Because is it, is it, is it love or is it, uh, I don't know what made you decide to accept this, yes, mm. because your, your school is a new school. Yes, it, it is. could very well disturb other parents from coming to your school because they are bringing those kind of children. children. Yeah, um, meeting Remy and doing yeah, yes. the owner of uh, Little Beginnings was um, like a dream come true for me because when I when I decided to go and set up a school to answer God's call, I knew that I was going to work with children with special needs. So before meeting her, I put that on the brochure of the school that we would take children, we would accommodate children with special needs. How I was going to do that, I did not know. <laughs> Where I was going to get the special needs children from, why I did you have? Why did you have a need for that? Yes, because I had, I had an experience with a child, two or three children with special needs at the school where I was working before and um, where I pioneered before and um, it was a Christian school, it was a church school and people brought these children in thinking they had spiritual problems. But working with those children and having them mixed with other children and seeing them develop without, I had no training. I just loved the children. And that was what led me to say, okay, let me go and acquire some skills, read books, learn more. And I knew that I, if I ever had a school, I would have children with special needs. What has love got to do with it, though? I mean, let me, I will come to your Maomi, because you are a teacher. You are a Montessori teacher. <laughs> and suddenly they bring all these kids to have, you know, did you have, feel any pain or any fear? Yeah, um, initially, because I haven't worked with children with special needs, I was a little bit scared. <laughs> and um, my head teacher would say, Mr. Magomi, go and pray because they're coming. <laughs> and you have to do something about it. So uh, when they came in with my experience with Montessori, Montessori was actually designed for children with special needs. So really? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we have lots of handsome materials that you can work with these no, children. No, but then these kids are now in with kids who don't have the same kind of problems that they have. Yes, but those materials fit in for both. Okay. Yes, for both categories of mm -hmm. children. Mm -hmm. So with the Montessori materials in place, it wasn't too difficult. And... Um, the children. So what was the fear? Uh, the fear initially, like, how will I handle them if there's a tantrum? If they just begin to scream, <laughs> what do I Which do? Which they do. Yes. They do. They yes, they do. They do. And if, how do I go about it? That was my fear because I've not been with them before. Mm -hmm. But now, is is 
I'm not actually trained, I'm not skilled in that area. But I'm learning from You've shown that it is possible. Mm -hmm. You know, because that's what I'm thinking about yes. here. The reason it's, I'm... It's possible because the children, they love each other, the way they interact, the relationship they have with the regular children, you, you, you just can't explain it. What were your own worries when you were sending your kids to this kind of school? Um, first, it was settling. How would they settle? How would the school would the school be able to work with them or manage? But we know that they, in the beginning, it won't be easy. So that's why we have people called facilitators. facilitators yeah. Okay, so okay, so they go with them to the school. So these are trained specialists who work with the children already. So they are not going to a strange, you know, taking them from school from where they're where, where they are comfortable or where they are used to to a different place where they are not familiar with. Tell so, me, Mr. Thomas, how does this have, how does this play into the theme of loving others? Well, it, that's principally what it is. These are children who people would unlovable. normally say are unlovable. unlovable. And you know, the, the, the pain about it is that they can't express themselves. Oh, but they love. They love with all their heart. They're, <laughs> so, they're, so, they're so pure in the way they love. And I've learned so much. And the regular children have learned a great deal. So I, I was telling Remy the other day, I said, we, actually, the regular children are benefiting more from what we're doing than the children with special needs because now they, they've learned difference. They've learned to appreciate that, you know, there's difference and they've learned to, uh, to, to help, you know, to love, to, to be friends, to mentor. And they actually you know, kind of like lead the children on and they want to teach them things. And, and it's, it's, it's a wonderful experience for mm -hmm. me. It is. It is. So were you saying something differently? Mm -hmm. No, I was also saying that the children have also loved to come to her. Like because your the, children. Yes, yeah. because there are days when, because, oh, they're in their uniforms and they're ready and all of that. <laughs> the, every morning, they drop them off uh, some How many children others. do you have in that school? Five. They're five, five boys five. now, you know. So if you come and you bring them to school and you want them to come down, no, they don't want, they are fighting. Because they know that, the yes, <laughs> because they know that, no, I'm not meant to come here. So it's the love they are receiving from there that they, they understand that, you know, this Is day... Is this an experiment for you? Do you think this will play out well in the long run? Because that doesn't happen here. You normally keep people with disabilities in one school, Yes. and then people without disabilities in another. Yes. Is there a statistic that shows it works somewhere else? Uh, I think it's working because there was a child that came in that wasn't talking. He wasn't really talking. But when he hears the regular children talk, he wants to, yes, he wants to mimic them. And with time, he could say everything. Anything you say, yeah. he wants to. He will repeat it. He, yeah. he, yes, he wants to say it and he wants to use it and he will use it in the right context. So mm -hmm. it helps the other children, they are learning from the regular ones also. So it, it, it is a way of helping them get into the real world, that they don't belong to just one world. There's a real world they can function. Okay, before in. I round up, because I've already, we've had two other stories of mm -hmm. ways people love. I want you to just tell me, what does Valentine mean to you? <laughs> Remy? Valentine, Valentine is showing love to the unlovable. Love, <laughs> unlovable. Love to be on the but we do, we do agree that it, I mean it's hap this has helped you think more than yourself True. Yeah. Yes, for all of you True. and True. your message to everyone would be Maomi you can love anybody it's how much you give that matters okay but I'm gonna keep Maomi back I'll keep Remy back and I'll continue this conversation because it seems like it's easy but it's not I need to know a little bit more about the Ibiduni Igudalo Foundation and also how Mr. Kenzo is managing to help people understand that adoption doesn't take anything from you, it actually makes you even bigger than you actually are. So thank you for being on the show. Thank you. For having thank us. For having us. <laughs> we'll see you again next week. Okay.